I don't think I ever shared this publicly, but for my first job, in addition to designing, I was tinting cars and making number plates as part of my first design job. So I really had a hands-on experience, not only behind the screens, but having a hands-on experience in the production of that element of graphic design. Um, I was eager to learn a lot about design um, because I was self-taught beyond the tutorials I found online and the, whether it be from YouTube or stuff that I would have found on Google. Um, this then led me to applying to colleges in the US. Um, so I quickly wrapped up a portfolio, um, some of the pieces that you saw before, and applied to my dream school, SCAD, but I didn't get in um, at that time. But however, life had other plans for me, I guess. So my interest in photography sort of came out of the blue. Um, it was one of those unexpected, but I guess necessary life moments. Um, I changed the course of my career again and my life as a young designer. I was working in the Corp Communications Unit at the Tobago Regional Health Authority as an OJT at the time. And just out of curiosity, I asked the photographer for the organization um, to just borrow a camera to shoot some pictures um, because she was unable at the time for some brochures I was working on. Um, now, at that time, I didn't know how to use a DSLR, um, but I was a fast learner and don't let nobody know, but automatic on the camera and a DSLR was my best friend at the time. Um, Eventually, after a few months of messing around with the camera at work, I eventually got my own camera, a Canon T3i, and I started a photography course at UWE, um, the Tobago Open Campus, where I was able to get a better understanding of the fundamentals and the technical side of photography. A year later, I had started my journalism and PR degree at CUSA. Um, it was a weird pivot um, for me going into journalism and PR, but it sort of just happened where around that time I was just steadily developing a love for media and photography. And I was working in court comms at the time. Um, it seemed like a easy choice, but also I initially wanted to apply for the graphic design program, um, but it wasn't available at the Bible campus. So journalism and PR was the best um, next option for me. A year later, um, I honestly didn't anticipate what was in store for me when I picked up that camera. Um, so over the few years, next few years, I started investing time and effort to develop my skills as a photographer. Um, photography, again, I will always say opened so many doors and amazing opportunities to me um, from representing the country on an international level um, to getting some of my big jobs as a freelance graphic designer and photographer at the time. Over the last nine years, I would say, I've been constantly working on establishing my brand and my aesthetic as a creative professional and developing a body of work that really represented my point of view. Um, but it wasn't easy getting to this point, I must admit. There was many times where I wanted to quit either photography or I wanted to quit graphic design. Um, but thankfully, I had a support system of amazing friends, um, family members, co-workers and colleagues who constantly pushed me um, and to remember that I had a very particular and interesting point of view as a creative. Um, and this leads me into the topic at hand for tonight, um, the relationship between graphic design and photography. For me, graphic design and photography existed in two separate ways. 
um, it was either or for me. And back then I didn't understand the parallels between the two, the two fields, sorry, and the advantages or benefits rather of integrating the two disciplines together. Pretty much the same for my aesthetic where my photography style and my graphic design style was completely different. And eventually I stopped looking at it as two separate things and start looking at it as more so visual representations of who I am as a creative individual as well as a person generally. And all the different facets or aspects of my life, whether it be through creativity or whatever discipline I was involved in, um, collectively made up my personal brand. When I was preparing this presentation, I came across this quote that perfectly encapsulated um, the relationship between graphic design and photography. Um, design and photography are very similar in what they require from creatives. Learning both of these doesn't make one a uh, jack or jail of all traits. It is simply reinforcing your core skills as a creative professional. The more diverse your application of your creativity is, the stronger it becomes and the more freedom you will find in creating compelling images and stories. Without a doubt, graphic design and photography are a dynamic duo. Um, principles such as composition, layout, lines, balance, and color um, apply to both disciplines, um, but just through different mediums. For most designers like myself, um, photography is an integral part of my design process. Um, as graphic designers, we manipulate photos to communicate our ideas and quite often, these images that we use dictate the overall design direction for whatever we're working on at the time. As I'm touching on this topic or showing the relationship between, I, between two disciplines, I just wanted to quickly share a bit of my design process um, where I, my design process for one of the posters that I created for the She Becomes Virtual Campaign for this year's Tobago um, Heritage Festival. The one in particular I'm gonna be focusing on is the one in the middle, the Tobago Traditions Tip for Tap um, poster. Hi, Terrell, before we um, jump into this yeah. part, um, let's just see if anybody has any questions, I guess, then feel free to ask or send them into the chat. Um, also, I forgot to mention that um, there'll be a little surprise giveaway at the end, but it involves participation. So um, please do send in your questions and uh, answer the, the questions that Terrell might pose to you. Um, we also have a couple of polls that we'll be sending out during the course of the presentation. So um, they are anonymous, so you can uh, just give us some idea on, um, on how you feel on some of the questions as the polls come out, all right? Uh, yeah, back to you, Terrell. Okay, cool, no problem. Um... Yeah, so I would say about 95% of the of my work is dictated by the images I use on the branding for our events at work. Um, or even in my own business, Cobra Blue, um, where I pull inspiration for color palettes, um, illustrations, as well as even logos. Um, just a sec. You all see the screen and everything okay? Anything pop up? Yep, still seeing the screen. Okay, cool. Yeah, there was just something on my end here. All right. So for the, just going back to the last image. Uh, right. For the Tobago, this campaign, the She Becomes Virtual campaign, I wanted to create a bowl um, graphic system that celebrated some traditional methods of design and photography, um, but in a contemporary way. Um, I was heavily inspired by the textures of age and worn publications, um, as well as handwritten signage and film photography, um, which tied into the overall vibe 
of what Tobago Heritage Festival is. As with all my design and some of my photography process, I often start with the research. Research is essential to what I do. Um, so I started gathering the different elements and creating different mood boards for what I wanted to create or what I wanted this artwork to evoke. So just a sec, right. So just some of the images that I would have pulled from my mood board um, when I was doing the research again. But it was this particular image of the West Indian reader, um, which was that pivotal point in terms of giving me the direction that I needed. Um, because I wanted, just like when a, some pretty long study of PNC had a West Indian reader, or I wanted to evoke that sense of feeling of nostalgia when people saw the artwork that we were producing. Um, moving on, getting on to the most important part of the process, which was the selection of the images. Um, as this, the saying goes, uh, my image is worth a thousand words. And as a visual communicator, photography is essentially one of the much more easier forms of visual communication. Um, because we didn't shoot our own content in the past, I would often have to spend a lot of time, um, hours, and even days going through hundreds of images trying to find the right image or that one shot to use in the branding. Um, thankfully, this year we were able to work with a photographer who comes from a graphic design and visual arts background, um, Naomi Kwan, um, who was able to capture some great images for us, um, which saved me a lot of time. Um, and then also being the only in-house designer at the time, I had to quickly push our work within a short time frame and I had to make my process as easy as possible in order to meet those deadlines. So getting further into this process for that particular flyer, um, found the image that I wanted to use, this perfectly captured the speech band performer um, in her element and pretty much her body language um, was perfect for what I wanted to create. So I isolated the subject, moved into the design stage and quickly went into Photoshop, mocked up the document, started applying the textures I would have found before, um, Importantly, for the, the photo into the brand, then see now it works exactly for what I wanted. Eventually, I started to put in the textures and the treatment on the imagery, which then led to adding the copy, which pretty much works where the A in tit for tat in the tat um, mimic the shape of the the hat or the helmet of the speech band performer. So in terms of balance and layout, it really worked well for the overall graphic. Added one of the final textures to the brand in and the final part, which was the logos of the organization and our partners. For me, graphic design, um, well, yeah, this was just basically the, the final image. Um, one thing I would add, even though the process seemed easy, um, this was just like a simplified version of it. Trying to make something look unintentionally messy or um, trying to get that battle feeling um, wasn't easy at all. For me as a designer, I tend to be a bit OCD and I had to let go a little bit of that control and really just let the graphic work for it itself. Um, and just to wrap up on that part, uh, the photo was pretty much driving this image for me. And yeah, it is definitely one of my 
favorite pieces that I, even though it's just a simple, but one of my favorite pieces that I created for the entire campaign. Graphic design, in moving along, graphic design relies on a number of elements. Um, in my opinion, again, photography is a very simplistic form of storytelling, um, which I guess is where that scene I had said before in terms of picture is where the thousand years come from. Um, for me personally, if I, in photography, I can convey a story that is compelling and easy to understand in a single snapshot, um, that would then open up my creative ability when it comes time to execute as a designer as well. Photographers have a fundamental understanding of design. Photograph sorry, photographers who have a fundamental understanding of design principles um, honestly make our job as graphic designers um, 10 times easier. Um, so if you know your photos are going to be used in combination with other elements, whether it be type or logos, it's always helpful to keep um, us in mind um, when you're on shooting um, and not just worrying about getting that best shot. Always think about the end goal or the end user. Um, say if you're shooting an event and you know that those photos would have to be used in marketing materials or promotion for the company you're shooting for. And just having that fundamental knowledge of design and how the images are going to be used um, really adds value to you as an individual as well as a creative professional. Moving along, another one of the, my favorite principles um, is the rule of um, For the non-designers and photographers here tonight, the rule of is simply means dividing your canvas or photo into three equal sections. Um, dividing the canvas into three sections vertically and horizontally. This would then create a three by three grid, um, but your grid won't be nine equal squares unless you create a perfect square. Um, yeah, moving along, to me, the rule of thirds is one of those best tools that would help you figure out how to use asymmetrical balance to your advantage. Um, if your design is in balance, it throws out the entire look. Um, using the relative grids um, helps you maintain good balance as well as keeping the whatever your photography or design asymmetrical. So this was just the final product of uh, Add, um, no, I wasn't the designer behind this, but the client had integrated some of their copy for and their logo for some of the social media stuff that they were creating. Darrell, yeah, quick question: Does mm. the um, does your photograph does the photography inform the design, or does the design inform the photography? For me. Um, depending on what I'm working on, the um, image would dictate the design and the overall art direction. Um, whether it be what the subject is doing in that time um, would spark an idea in terms of, hey, if this is, say, somebody who's a little bit sad, that would then determine what type of color palette that I need to use um, in whatever that final graphic I'm creating in that moment. But there are times where the graphic or graphic design would dictate um, the type of imagery I'm using based on, again, this is basically pretty much based on the time and place at the end of the day. Um, I hope that answers the your question. Um, yeah, um, just wrapping up this part on, you know, um, for me, Personally, I would recommend a lot of photographers try to learn um, the basic design skills. To me, that would not only improve your work, but 
improve your brand and your value as a photographer. Um, you already have the eye for photography and incorporating these basic elements of um, or principle of designs, whether it be layout, typography, color, balance, hierarchy, um, really sets you apart um, in an already saturated market. This then leads me to the final part of the presentation where I just wanted to share some simple and easy ideas um, where we also could integrate um, elements or services, design services into your photography service. So one of the uh, most- Tara, before we jump in, anybody has any questions you'd like to ask, um, feel free to unmute yourself and speak to Terrell. I know everybody is shy, but um, it, it makes it a lot easier for the presenter if you have some questions. If not, um, I'll pull out one of the questions we got from our submissions. So thank you to all the people who submitted questions online. Uh, to Daily Bread, Tia Amelia 01, Katiana Monelexo, Lyle Roberts, Nelly is a beauty, Tamasia, Ariel, Colin, Jadeen, photos by Simone, Simone Brown, and uh, Christine Norton. So um, I'll pull one of these questions out here and ask, uh, just to kind of break it up a little bit. Um, somebody asked, your portfolio is quite interesting. Where do you find inspiration and what or who inspires you? Okay, um, interesting question. Um, to me, I find inspiration in the weirdest things. Um, so for photography, um, I could be traveling in town and just, for me, this may sound weird. Like give away how much, um, and, yeah. Um, so yeah, I like people watching and whenever I'm standing waiting on transportation, I could be watching the conversation of somebody across the road by uh, a food stall and seeing how they lean up against the pole. That would then give me some form of inspiration for uh, a photo shoot, something um, pretty much natural. Um, or as it relates to design, I could again be driving somewhere or walking somewhere and I see using the food soil again as an example, the colors of the, the battered board that is fading or one of my favorite points of reference is fed signs um, and how the typography on that is so bold. Um, which also inspired some of the, 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 the visuals that I created for Heritage. Um, it's in those places that I would find inspiration. Again, in addition to going on social media, scrolling through Instagram, um, whether it be Pinterest as well, and just collecting inspirational ideas for projects later down the road. I mean, I have no use for it, but um, I quickly store them in, say, uh, Pinterest board, Instagram safe profile. In terms of who inspires me, um, there isn't one specific or particular individual that I am inspired by um, that reflects my work um, as a designer. If I had to call a name, um, Chad, you and I were discussing this before the call, but Platon um, and his approach to photography and how he integrates design into his work um, and his process is really inspiring to me. Um, but I am surprisingly influenced by a lot of local creators as well, um, people within my circle. Um, they, their stories and how they got to where they are um, is really inspiring to me. And uh, yeah, I think that is pretty much needed. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so jump back into your, your, your presentation. Sorry for sidetracking you. No, no, no problem. That's no problem. 
Um, so yeah, um, what I was touching on is pretty much photo retouching. This may not be as simple as the others I'm going to show, but integrating elements of photo retouching or photo manipulation into your work and offering this service could add some more value again to your photography business. Um, why I wanted to include this, I, since the pandemic started, I have been seeing a lot of companies um, within the region as well as internationally looking for a uh, lot of photo retouchers. And I know this pandemic um, severely affected the creative industry more so full-time photographers who heavily relied on events, um, whether it be weddings, parties, fets, um, as a major source of income. Um, and this was an interesting area that still fell, well, fell or toyed the line between graphic design and photography. And depending on your level of retouching skills, um, you could be as, see as Vance or just as this image shot by Phil, um, Alan Visual Photography, or simple retouching. Um, it, it's pretty much basically up to you on what you like as a photographer and integrating this skill into your business could add value and to your brand as well. The next one is right up my have, Sorry, we have one question about retouching from Marlene mm -hmm. W. Um, mm -hmm. Marlene asks, would you say with respect to retouching photos, um, does it have its own ethics or are we guided accordingly? I guess this is from the point of view of, you know, over retouching or taking out you know, I mean, I think this is a, it's a it's a common question and and, and issue. I think people um, always seem to struggle with you know how much retouching is too much retouching, and then you know in respect to like portraits and so on. You know, do you take out scars and beauty marks and all those kind of things? So I think I think that is what she's asking. If not, um, Marlene W, please feel free to to correct me. Okay, um, if that's what she meant, um, no. I'm not an expert in retouching. Um, I just do a little bit of retouching, um, light retouching, but from my knowledge of friends in the industry who are retouchers, it's pretty much, the, it basically comes down to the time and place and the conversation between the photographer or the retoucher and the client. If the client wants this done or retouched, at a certain level or degree that may stray away from or a lot away from the original image um that is entirely up to them um but it's your responsibility as a photographer or a toucher to know when too much is too much and uh, again yeah it's pretty to me it pretty much comes down to the time and place and uh, the level of retouching you want to offer. Um, for myself, um, so it's so funny that the image of me right here, I did a little bit of retouching on my face where I prefer to make it as natural as possible with some, just some simple removing of scars, pimples, whatever, and like dodging and burning. That is enough for me um, as far as I go. Um, removal of hair and stuff and those kind of things. Those little cosmetic things, but again, it comes down to the taste and style of the photographer and the retoucher. Um, Marlene, I hope that answers your question. Uh, hi, can I ask a question about color grading? Could you speak up? I'm not hearing you a bit. Sure. Uh, hi, can I ask a question about color grading? Sure, no problem. Um, what are your thoughts on natural color versus color grading? And what advice would you give somebody who's trying to get into more professional color grading? For photography sure no problem um to me i embrace it i i like it it adds value and sometimes deeper messaging um to what you capture um pretty much off camera um again just like retouching there is it could be too much or it could be too little but it entirely depends on your taste and your style for me personally, I like 
with images, a lot of moody images and tones. So I would often create uh, my own presets. Um, and if you look at some of the work that I had shown before, um, I relied on color grading a lot to bring my vision or that concept to 100%. Um, what I would say for anybody who is trying to get into it is definitely look at different photographers and their work and how they integrate color grading into the work that they do and see what resonates, <coughs> sorry, see what resonates with you and how you can not necessarily copy that or implement it into a level that feels comfortable or true to your aesthetic as a photographer. Thanks. No problem. Any other questions, chat? Yeah, we just have, uh, we have two. So somebody is asking, Petunia Kennedy, Lewis. Mm -hmm. Hi, Petunia. Petunia is um, on one of our executive members. Um, as a photographer, if your exposure is close to perfect, um, where can you incorporate graphic design? Where and how? So I guess she's asking about, um, you know, how do you incorporate graphic design into your photography, just generally speaking? Um, I guess, I don't know if you'll speak to that uh, later on or in this section. And then Sean Morrison is asking with retouching, is it a mix of Photoshop and Lightroom? Okay, cool. Um, so in relation to Petunia's question, um, I would have actually touched on that earlier. Um, for me, in terms of integrating the two, um, it pretty much comes down to what the final article or piece is that you're creating. So if it's say a perfectly exposed image of a, a model or subject on a beach, beach um, and you're shooting a campaign for say uh, a skincare line, um, I guess, and I don't know if I'm going to be straight from the question, but I don't know if it would tie into what Um, sorry about that. Um, I think, um, yeah, I kind of just lost in terms of like, if she could just kind of explain what she meant in terms of the exposure part, because I think that's what just kind of threw me off a bit. Okay. Let's jump on to the other one with the photo with the Photoshop and Lightroom. Oh, we need to retouch it. Um, yeah. Um, for my process, it involves a bit of both. Um, usually in the beginning, before I started using Lightroom, I pretty much did everything in Photoshop. Now you could do that, but for me with my process, I often color grade, um, do the retouching first in Photoshop, um, get to the point where the image I want, and then I take it into Lightroom for um, some final color grading and little tweaks and adjustments here and there. So depending on your workflow, you could either use either or or um, primarily Photoshop. I think, um, just getting back to Petunia's question, I think um, it depends on the, on, the, on the context of what you're trying to create, you know? Um, mm -hmm. You know, if it's, I mean, if it's for a campaign or, or something or a message you're trying to send, then you try to use the, the, the other elements of graphic design to incorporate into the, into the photography. Um, so I think you really have to have a, a, somewhat of an endpoint in mind of where you're trying to get to, what you're trying, the message you're trying to convey um, with the photography yeah. as part of one element in the in the whole um, graphic design. So I don't know if I don't know if that answers the question. Uh, okay, sorry. So you can jump back into the, um, the presentation. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, um, this part is, as I was saying, is my area expertise. Say, for example, you are a photographer that shoots portraits and your niche is working with um, corporate executives, um, musicians, artists, creatives, and you produce 
a lot of headshots and portraits for these people. One of the services that you can integrate in to your photography business is offering many design packages like creating business cards, um, just like this, something that's simply, and say, for example, the client ha already has a logo, um, you can create something simple and easy like this. To me, keeping it simple is uh, an easy hack um, once you have a, a fundamental knowledge of design principles um, when it comes to creating or producing branding or any kind of stationery. Um, in addition to this, you could also create some simple social media branding. So whether it be covers for um, Instagram, Facebook, well, not Instagram, sorry, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or even LinkedIn, um, which right now a lot of people are rapidly or putting a lot more effort into building their digital presence and by offering packages like these and being a one-stop shop um, for your clients, um, again, all of this adds value to your brand. Um, again, you could create some cool, simple social media graphics um, for the social media. This could be a really, just a nice little touch um, to them. Um, and to me, it is, I think it's pretty much easy. Um, but again, everybody's different. Um, if you're into wedding photography, um, staying on the same topic of stationery, you could get into not only producing and capturing images of the bride and groom, but also offer a mini service if you are, say, let's say, into those intimate bespoke type weddings. Um, these type of wedding stationaries are pretty much trending um, in this area. And again, it is pretty much simple. Pretty much laying out the text, um, whether it be that's a sun serif, and adding a little touch of that floral element of it um, really, to me, is um, something that anyone can achieve. Um, another design idea as well. And this was actually one I did for a cool government recently who hosted a virtual wedding. Um, again, pretty much simple graphics um, that once you have a basic understanding of Photoshop, um, you could create something like this as well. These were some creative resources I just kind of put together to help persons who are interested in integrating design into um, their photography work. Or again, like on the last point in terms of pivoting and offering a few design services. Um, again, I know Chad would probably share this with everyone um, online, but yeah, so we'll um, we'll send out an email to everyone with the, with this. So I mean, if you want to take it down or you screen grab it, but I mean, we'll send out an email to everyone uh, who's registered. Um, just be, sorry, just before I move on. So basically, what you're saying is that the photography and graphic design, obviously, there's a there's an overlap and a link. Um, yeah. But as a photographer, it's not always about bring in photography and graphic design together it could also be doing photography and also offering graphic design stuff in parallel or, or on the side of, of the photography so there's different ways to look at it there's photography and graphic design and then photography and graphic design yeah, yeah no, definitely. No it's not necessarily something new to our space because there are photographers who would pivot into other services whether it be videography area photography um, styling, um, fashion design, printmaking. So graphic design is just another avenue that you can integrate into your services as well. And again, as I mentioned in the quote, quote earlier, it's not necessarily about being a jack or jill of all trades. It's just adding value to you because in this pandemic, you can see where putting your eggs into one basket is not necessarily um, the best option. And yeah. Okay, good. Um, so I think that wraps the 
end of the presentation. So this is where we jump into some of the questions you guys, um, the additional questions you guys um, would have sent in as well as uh, open floor for anybody who wanted to ask any additional questions about some of the stuff that I touched on um, or anything that you would find, like to find out as it relates to graphic design. Or Pharrell, do you have do you have any questions to ask the audience? Ah, yes. Um, actually, if anybody could answer, how do you know as a creative when you are ready to rebrand? Or how do you know when it's time for to rebrand? When you're not seeing the growth that you want or you're not seeing that you're becoming recognizable in your field? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? When the initial artwork no longer uh, gives the same value that it used to. Mm -hmm. Yes, hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yes, um, in addition to some of the answers I was just given, um, it also includes the fact that if you are offering a new service, like if you're a photographer offering graphic design services, um, it would be wise to rebrand yourself because now you're offering a, an additional service, which you didn't before. So it would make sense to include that as part of your overall package. Okay, cool. I'm thinking maybe we should do it routinely every two to three years. I guess that's it. All right. Um, anybody has any questions? If not, I'll I could pull out some from the uh, the questions we got ahead of time. I would I like to hear Mr. Oh. Tyrell's response. When should you rebrand? <laughs> um, to me, it is kind of similar. One of my answers was similar. I think it was Kathy who would have said in terms of periodically, um, you know you have to rebrand because it would get to the point where your old work or your old portfolio um, doesn't reflect your new work or your knowledge or vision as it relates to the field right now. And if we are talking rebranding um, and we're specifically focusing on say the visual identity component of branding, um, say a logo, um, if you want to get down to the technical part of it, for me, when I have conversations with clients about why they're rebranding or why they're redesigning their logo, want to get a new logo. Um, one of the things I like to add or have them think about is the visual application of the logo. So from just me observing, um, and this is not me bashing anybody, but I've seen a lot of logos for photographers that work well for just the digital format. And usually when it gets to the point of, say, integrating that logo onto other elements like a t-shirt um, and you want to do embroidery and your logo is so detailed and has a lot of texture and gradients and colors, to be quite honest, I would give the printers a lot of hell and they would flat out sometimes tell you they're not going to produce that or it ends up coming out messy and then you're then stuck having spent um, money or time on creating a logo that is basically um, serving one purpose. So I think isn't that if you look at it from that perspective, from the technical side of it, where elements of your visual identity isn't working on other mediums as it relates to your overall identity, whether it be a social media, print brand, then marketing materials, whatever. And in addition, in addition to your brand, which is another beast by itself, where that is 
pretty much what people know you as. So if we are talking, and I'm not expert in this area as well, but if we're talking in terms of marketing and social media content creation, I, you can't tell me that you are, a, let's say, a wedding photographer. And when I go to your social media page or your website, I am seeing a lot of natural photography. So people pretty much would assume just based on your digital presence that you are a natural photographer. And I'm saying that because that is actually something that actually happened to me earlier in my stage where even though photography for me was uh, started off as a hobby, um, it steadily grew into a service that I offered along with my design um, business. I didn't want to be branded as a photographer um, because graphic design was my primary focus. And I did something completely wrong when I started, and this was around the time like when Instagram was starting to get popular. And up until recently, um, I was putting out a lot more, more photography related content. And that sort of confused my brand because immediately when people came to my page and they only see photography work, they automatically assume that I am so hard to be a photographer and the shop when they find out, oh, you're yeah, actually a graphic designer. So it comes back into you and what you put out there and those elements of knowing when components of your visual identity, again, works, whether it be a logo. And to me, I always say, if you don't know, ask a question. Um, reach out to professionals within the industry or the field or even other photographers who would have rebranded and just generally ask them that same question, why did they rebrand? Um, usually time when you work with a designer who has a fundamental knowledge of branding, um, they would be able to easily explain why this isn't working um, as opposed to just you creating a logo that is just visually pretty. So yeah, that's just my general thoughts on rebranding um, or knowing when it's time to rebrand. Well, um, I see one of the questions today actually, I don't know if they ask it because of what today is. Today is Mental Health uh, Awareness mm -hmm. Day. And um, I, somebody asked about how, um, let, me, let, me, let me not paraphrase that question. <clears throat> how important is your mental health in relation to the work you produce? Very good question. Um, for me, that is important. Um, for me, as somebody who suffers from mental health, I, um, I have general anxiety disorder. Um, that usually, depending on my mood, really affects my work. When I am feeling anxious, I tend to focus a lot on just the anxiety and that in turn affects my work. Um, I wouldn't be able to deliver on time. There were times where I had to cancel um, presentations with clients because I, wouldn't, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. And it wasn't until this year actually where I said, you know what, um, not only because of the pandemic, but this year was um, equally tough for me and my family, um, losing a few of our family members. I made a decision to start therapy. And that was honestly one of the best decisions that I've ever made for this date. And I would strongly recommend that as creatives, we tend to get wrapped up in our work sometimes, um, that you're able to speak freely and openly to somebody about some of the challenges that you are facing when it comes to mental health. And one of the best advice that I've gotten um, is learning to separate myself from the work that I produce. These are just simply byproducts of me and not necessarily me as an individual. 
And sometimes we tend to get wrapped up in our work and we may get a bad critique and that just throws off our day completely or somebody wasn't getting the, the, the message or what he was trying to create as an artist and or somebody would have left a comment in your social media feed and that threw off your day again. Um, learning to separate yourself from your work and something that I've been working on is pretty helpful. Um, for a lot of, again, for a lot of us creatives who are deeply connected into the work we do. I think somebody's raising their hand. Oh, somebody raised their hand. I didn't see that. You yes. Raise their hand. Yes, I, go ahead. Yes, man. Yes, Wendy, go ahead. Hi. Good evening, Terrell. Hi, everybody. Terrell, question. Mm -hmm. you're, as a graphic artist, mm -hmm. your product, that you're, your deliverable, is usually part of a job. Mm -hmm. Do you spend any time using your graphic art as an art um, for your, as from an artistic and creative point of view as an art as opposed to a skill set with a job? Oh, oh, I love that question. Um, actually, those pieces of that I created for Heritage this year, um, I wanted to have a little fun with that for me. And to me, I love those vintage collectible, um, whether it be travel posters or postcards you would get that you could use as posters and add in your room. And I wanted to create something and be a little bit selfish in me and created a art piece of some form um, that I could print out, um, just removing a little bits and pieces from it um, to work as pieces of art for me. Now, that wasn't until recently I started doing that where Graphic design was pretty much a job. It was pretty much a job that paid the bills and that was the primary responsibility for me. But photography was that avenue for me to be a little bit more free and expressive and produce what I would consider art for me. And it wasn't until recently where I had dialed back on offering photography um, as a service um, because I didn't see that spark or felt as if uh, that the work was authentic or true to me. And I wanted photography to remain as that piece where I am able to create something for me that wasn't centered around work. So I'm trying to do that much more now with graphic design and think beyond it with the responsibility of just being a work process. So, yeah. In relation to the question before about mental health and um, mm -hmm. graphic art and design, do you then find that that part that you're keeping for yourself for your artistic development helps you deal with the anxieties and deal with those moments when you get those uh -huh from somebody that you really don't want to hear? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, the good thing about it too is whenever I was feeling overwhelmed by graphic design, photography was there as and vice versa. Yeah. Um, photography was so much, I had to I kind of focus on graphic design. Um, so definitely, it, it, it helps a lot. Great, thanks a lot for your answers. No problem. Hi Terrell, I, I kind of brought it up at the start and then I saw somebody else ask one, somebody who had posted a question on social media. Um, about your collaboration. Um, if you look through your work and having heard you speak in Tobago, um, you, you, you seem to have this, you figured out the formula for doing collaborations with other creatives and other people in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. Would you mind talking a little bit about that, how you, how you go about doing collaborations and how you find your people to collaborate with? Um, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, just going back a bit, for me growing up, that circle of um, people who I would look to at in terms of getting advice as a creative. So I made a promise for myself from since I was young. I said, you know what, if I'm not, I need to make this for myself. So 
as time grew and I started interacting with other creatives in this space, um, some of these persons who are pretty close friends of mine, um, we started developing a bond and beyond just friends, it integrated into work where we would call on have a fundamental understanding of these persons' different, different design, well, whatever design, photography, fashion, or whatever skills that they had. Um, creating that community, to me, if one isn't there, is something I think a lot of creators should do. And to me, in Trinidad and Tobago, we are so privileged that we are so small that somebody who may be at the top of the game um, is easily accessible um, through whether it be Instagram or DM, because actually somebody who I looked up to, um, who is not necessarily a designer, but somebody who is at the top of the game in terms of being a creative director for, or was a creative director for one of the major agencies in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and just reaching out and just picking their brain and thoughts on something as it relates to me. And to me, just jumping back to collaboration, to me, that's essential in terms of expanding your skills and abilities. Now, recently, some friends of mine, we created a little movement um, where we would go on little excursions uh, around to be going to do different projects as that being a, a form of escape from work and creating time to produce work for us. And through that, we, that little circle comprised of not only photographers, but designers, fashion designers, um, stylists, general creatives. And you were able to learn bits and pieces as it relates to your field. So some of the recent projects I would have worked, personal projects I would have done, integrated fabric. Now, I don't know nothing about fabric and the type of fabrics and stuff, but listening to people who have understanding of fashion design and textile and seeing why this would work, this is the best fabric to work with this. Um, I had some knowledge about that here in terms of when I went go into, say, a clothes store, I am easily able to say, hey, I want this um, linen cotton blend. Um, to make a or something kind of like that. So to me, collaboration is essential for growth, um, as well as for overall development of the industry. Um, because to me, Trinidad and Tobago's creative industry is something unique. Um, and if you want to separate the two, Trinidad and Tobago, each being equally amazing in terms of the amount of talent that exists here and collaborating and trying to collaborate with other persons especially when you're just starting up i think is really helpful um in your journey as a creative well, as you mentioned trinidad and tobago um i was wondering how does tobago manifest itself in your work mm, um what I can say in terms of like that is for the work I do at the Tobago Festivals Commission, um, Tobago is in all the names of the event that we do. And for me, my particular design aesthetic was almost minimal and not necessarily the norm in terms of what was trending in graphic design or design locally. And to me, throughout that process in terms of creating a branding, for say heritage, blue food. I wanted to one remain authentic to me, but keep the end user in mind um, as always. So I remember for heritage last year, um, I would have posted or the department would have posted one of the calendars for heritage. And to me, the design worked well. Um, it was clean, minimal, um, everything was working. But I designed it for me not thinking about the Tobago audience in mind. And it was just a further comments after in terms of, we can't read this, if one to tend, why I do this, it wasn't working. And eventually taking that feedback, um, I had not necessarily taken everything that everybody would have said, but certain elements and integrated that into my work. Now, 
I like to call my aesthetic um, when it comes to design for some of the areas and for photography, um, Caribbean minimalism. And with design, when I'm creating an identity, even though, say, the logo mark or the overall logo may be minimal, um, there's that element of Tobago or the Caribbean on a whole um, that comes through in the color palette that I choose. So the color palette would be definitely vibrant, very reminiscent of our surrounding. And same thing for if just talking back on the Tobago Heritage Festival branding, um, I pulled up a lot of the palettes and the colors that I use in the branding from the actual events itself. So it was almost like this cosca like pattern. If you look at the, say, for example, the Mariah Heritage Wedding, and you see these colors that don't necessarily supposed to go together, but where really works enough. Um, pulling those elements of things that people relate to locally, I integrated a bit of that into whatever I do, as well as in the conceptualization phase of what I do as well, um, where I am heavily influenced by vintage and almost historical pieces or elements of, say, graphic design. For me personally, I love um, hand painting fit signs. That is like an obsession that I have. Um, and that component of me and seeing something that is so relatable to our society, our culture in Trinidad and Tobago, but most of in Tobago as well too, um, just kind of wrapping up, really and truly I try to integrate as best as possible, um, depending on the project. Okay, great. Um, I have a question. As, well, I have one question. I also, there's a question from Marlene Wilson. So Marlene would like to know, Mr. George, any plans for a workshop in Tobago soon? Um, and, uh, and I'll ask my question one time, just for the, for the, for the, for the expediency. Um, before we leave tonight, um, if you could just give us one piece of business advice you'd like everyone to leave here to, tonight with and also one piece of creative advice that you'd like everybody to leave with. No problem. Um, Ali, does anyone have that, um, that workshop? <laughs> but definitely, yeah, I would definitely love to post, uh, hopefully um, the pandemic eases up, um, hopefully sometime next year where we could actually have an in-person session where I actually, um, when you guys are asking to do this talk, I wanted to make it as interactive as possible, where, say, we do an uh, on-the-spot rebranding project for um, a photographer who wanted to rebrand. Or I walked you through the process of, if you wanted to rebrand for your own self, how to go about starting or conceptualizing the idea for a logo or something like that. I wanted to make it fun and interactive that it was, almost something that was not necessarily exciting, but something that you connected with on a deeper level in terms of that saying, hey, I created this logo for myself. Um, I know the steps and how to process this and I created my own brand for me. Um, but definitely I would love to do more workshops, um, whether it be through TTPS, um, myself, um, and definitely collaborate with a lot more creators here in Tobago who have a lot to, to offer um, to the creative industry um, in Trinidad and Tobago, or well, more specifically, Tobago, the Tobago space. So yeah, um, Charlie, can you just remind me about your question again? Um, before we leave tonight, um, just one piece of business advice and one piece of creative advice you'd like to, sure. like everybody to please take away. And then I have one more question, important question after that. <laughs> yeah, all right, we'll see. Um, one piece of business advice I would leave everybody with tonight would be to take some time to focus on your brand and more specifically your voice as a creative in this space culture and art to be able. Now, let's say everybody inside here are photographers um, or working professionals. Let's be real, we know the market is severe, um, is overly saturated 
But to me, working on establishing your brand and your visual identity as a creative is essential, especially now during this pandemic where it is almost like a, a level playing field um, for the industry. So definitely put some time and effort into investing in to your brand. Um, definitely reach, you can reach out to say designers like myself or designers um, you would know in Trinidad if you're based in Trinidad um, to start that conversation of working on crafting one your brand and then your visual identity as a creative. Um, one creative advice um, I would share from somebody that I actually received this week is be true to who you are. Um, you have a unique voice and something to say as a creative individual. And tapping into that energy, you would then be able to produce work that is authentically you. And from there, you won't necessarily have to worry about what people say because you are creating for you. Um, one thing to add to that as well is start creating work and putting on work. Um, and this is advice I would give for myself as well too, where you're always creating excuses, oh, I'm busy or whatnot, but there are things that you could do and challenges. I don't know if um, Sirita is on the call, but see for that challenge, I don't know if you guys will um, follow Sirita on Instagram, but that challenge where she was just posting these aesthetically um, funny um, images on social media. Um, if you know you can't necessarily go and shoot, just pick up your phone and start some mobile phone photography and just challenge yourself to just producing content. Um, that's some advice that I am taking for myself actually right now. Um, in this pandemic and start to start producing more work for me, um, whether it be true photography, graphic design, or some new disciplines that I am thinking about getting into. So yeah. Um, sorry, I got one more question in. So this is a question from Christine Norton. Um, Christine is asking, um, you're shooting people spontaneously and you want to bring charm and engagement. What role can graphic design play? Interesting question. Um, to me, it comes back to the... You know, that might, that might not work. Um, I guess if you, if you want to talk about elements of, say, composition or getting a shot, you know, say, framing, say, for example, with me for design, and I often create a lot of images and content um, utilizing the real tools. And even before I started integrating that into my design work, um, that was something when I started learning photography, one of the skills or the principles um, that I used to have a lot of fun with when creating, because it makes some really interesting um, visuals at the end of the day. Um, one other element that you can incorporate graphic design into that, um, which is kind of tricky as well too, is think about the colors and uh, output. So for example, if let's say you're shooting carnival and it is constant people moving and you want to get a shot that not necessarily say picture the overall scene, but moments where they be just pieces of an air and the costumes is falling on, you can then take that and enhance that, whether it be through photo manipulation or editing and create an interesting poster um, or piece of art form um, through incorporating elements of graphic design and photo manipulation into your work. Um, so I hope that kind of answers your question, um, Christine. Yes, um, Terrell, thank you. I actually, um, Terrell, there was, there was just one thing. I mean, a lot of what you spoke about relates to using graphics for branding services mm -hmm. for yourself so that you present to the public a particular image. 
um, what I'm thinking about and what I'm working on myself is trying to use graphics and all things graphics to tell a story of your with your photography. So you are combining, seeking to combine. That's why it's interesting to listen to you talk and to see what you do. Um, particularly that work that you just did for Tobago Heritage. Um, it's very interesting uh, because it's telling a story. It's a story. When I see it at any rate, that's what I see. They may have had a demand on you to produce something specific for a brochure, I don't know what. But for me, I see a story when I look at it. And so it's an, another way, I think, to look, about, to look at the value of that skill of graphic design, at least that's what I see. Cheryl, um, I know we, we probably won't, won't, we were planning to run an hour, so I'll say it's now 8.20, so we'll run another 10 minutes, if, if, um, if you don't mind, Tara. Yeah, no problem. All right, so just have a couple more questions. Um, Simone asks, did Terrell engage the services of a consultant to guide the rebranding or was it done on his own? Would you recommend a media professional to help brand development? Let's repeat that last part again, please, sorry. Would you recommend a media professional to help brand development? Um, if you wanted to do over your brand, is it something you it, think you could do yourself? I mean, well, not you, obviously, you could do it. But, um, you know, should you engage or hire or partner with, with somebody who is... Uh, in that area? Um, yeah, definitely I would recommend speaking to a professional in that area. Um, if you are comfortable with your abilities when it comes to design, by all means go for it. Um, there's almost that sense of um, self-gratification that you know that you created or produced your own um, artwork. So to me, I don't mind if that's the case, but if you are serious about establishing uh, a solid brand voice, you should definitely speak to somebody who is skilled in that particular area. Um, not only because um, of that, but it's good to get uh, almost unbiased opinion in terms of your brand. For me, when I'm working with clients, I personally like to get into beyond them just wanting something pretty or just a new logo or something. I want to know why you want this. Um, talk about things as it relates to next five years down the road in terms of where you see your brand growing. Um, stuff that I don't necessarily have to do as a graphic designer, but I think it's essential um, depending on one, your aesthetic um, and what you want um, your brand to see. It goes back into Another point that I'm going to touch on in terms of finding the right designer or consultant that works for you. Now, Trinidad and Tobago, we are lucky to have designers um, from various aesthetics. Um, we have designers like myself who are primarily focused on creating clean, minimal um, logo marks. They are designers who work primarily with illustration. So it depends on what you want your visual identity to look like. But again, I would always strongly recommend reaching out to a professional when it comes to seriously tackling, um, tackling your rebranding or if it's your first time actually creating a, a visual identity for yourself. Thanks, Terrell. Uh, Mark, hey Mark, how are you going? Mark Shangi um, has a question about uh, recommendations to get over creative blocks. And have you ever experienced uh, creative block yourself? Um, thanks for that question, Mark. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, if you know me personally, that I think I have welcomed creative blocks and that threatened stage into my creative process. Um, if I'm working on, say, uh, a logo and I get to the point where um, I'm fretting about this isn't working, I maybe shouldn't have taken this job, um, that part is an integral part um, of my process because if that doesn't happen, then I know something is off. 
Because usually when that does happen, I tend to, tend to create my best week. So when it comes to creative blocks, usually it goes back to what I was discussing with, um, I think it was Wendy. Yeah, when we were talking about um, graphic design, when I was feeling overwhelmed about that area, I would then go to photography and then vice versa if I was having a creative block in either or. There are times where I am having a general creative block where I am not feeling creative and that's honestly the best time to absolutely do nothing about it. The minute you try to force yourself, it's going to make it worse. So um, some advice I got from my therapist about that actually was just doing something mindless, uh, where it be going on YouTube and randomly just watching a set of videos or taking in some Netflix documentaries um, for the rest of the day and not answering your phone and just having some self-care time um, usually works for me um, in overcoming creative blocks. Cool. Um, I have another question here about what, um, a lot of your work is quite interesting. Um, is there any new gear, software, techniques that you're experimenting with at the moment? Um, in terms of gear, I recently just invested in uh, a new computer um, and I purchased some backdrops for uh, some projects, some ideas that I want to play around with. Um, in terms of software and techniques, um, I want to produce more work um, as a form of personal project like what I did for Heritage because I found it was interesting and it's been a while since I've done any personal design work for myself beyond branding or doing my own rebranding. I, I could see you developing that whole heritage thing into like a series. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've been playing around with the idea in terms of how I could expand on that because I really like the textures I, I created. And I'm seeing this playing out into not only posters, but um, merch, different things, and even integrating that into photography in terms of the colors and playing around with new technique where they be different editing styles and just experimenting because it's been a while since I've just experimented with new techniques. So um, hopefully I should have some free time, um, cross my fingers, over the next few months, um, next couple months in 2020, where I want to actually sit down and devote some time to producing um, work. For me, I'm just experimenting with different techniques um, that I would have just came across, put on the, the back burner until I had the time to do so. Okay, cool. Well, um, okay, we're coming close to the end. Um, I see we have one or two other little questions, but let me just get something out of the way. So, Terrell has generously offered to offer uh, one of the participants tonight. Um, either a free logo design or a one hour consultancy with him. Um, so the question, so, to, so I took down the names of all those who uh, responded to his question about rebranding. Um, I know there's some people spoke live and then some people also responded in the chat. So uh, Terrell, I have their names listed here. If you want to pick a number from one to eight and uh, that will be our lucky winner. Okay, perfect. Uh... Let's go with number four. Oh, number four is, uh, hold on, let me just check the name there. Where did the shit is that? Karima Khan. Karima? So Karima, get in touch with um, myself or with Terrell and uh, we'll arrange that, yeah? So congratulations, Karima. All right, um, let me see. So I have a couple other questions and we have about two more minutes. So let's try to get through these fast. So Mariella Bruzel, hi Mariella. Uh, Mariella wants to know, what's your favorite lens for headshots? Um, 
definitely nifty 50. Interesting. All right, so that seems to be most of the questions online and I think we covered most of the questions. So sorry if we didn't get to all the questions. Um, if anybody has any last questions, now is the time to jump in and, and ask them. Uh, if not, um, we'd like to go ahead and sell, say thanks to Terrell. Um, I, I know this, this COVID lockdown time has been a challenge for us and we were really trying to ramp back up our engagement and do some more of these Zoom calls and stuff. Um, thank you so much, Terrell. I know you were under a bit of stress trying to get this together and you told me you redid the whole presentation at, you know, at last night. So thank you for that. Thank you for everybody for sticking around. Um, I think we had, a, once people joined, I don't think we had anybody leave the chat, leave the, the session uh, for the entire time. So thank you so much. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for those who sent in questions from beforehand. And thank you for sticking around. So yeah, like I said before, if you are not a member, please consider joining. Um, also um, look forward to seeing you all on our next, probably what's gonna be our next um chat uh, online which will be our um, award ceremony on the first of november so keep an eye out for that uh so thank you everybody thank you terrell problem my chat anytime